ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम what was property 3 that said every element has got a representation and zero has unique representation that unique representation property is a important one which will let us signal it out okay right it says a set of vectors in rn are called linearly independent so that property that zero has unique representation meaning what if sigma alpha i vi is zero then each alpha i must be zero so that property is called the linear independence right of the vectors v1 v2 vk so a set of vectors is called linearly independent if a linear combination of them equal to zero implies all the scalars are equal to zero right so and if they are not what is the opposite of it that means there is a linear combination which is zero but not all the scalars are zero that is called uh, that property is called that set is linearly dependent right so opposite of independent we'll say it is dependent independent means zero has unique representation and dependent will mean that zero does not have that means sigma alpha i vi equal to zero for not all alpha i equal to zero such a relation should be possible So let us look at uh, some examples. Can I say the vectors uh, v1, v2, v3 in R3? Right, there are three components. The vectors are v1, which is 1, 0, 0; v2 is 1, 1, 0; 1, and v3 is 1, 1, 1. I want to check whether they are linearly independent or not. So how will we check something is linearly independent? uniqueness of representation for zero so take a linear combination which is equal to zero does it imply that all the coefficients involved are zero or not so let us check that so let alpha v1 plus beta v2 plus gamma v3 be equal to zero right so what does that mean alpha times what is 1 0 0 plus beta times 1 1 0 plus gamma times the third vector 1 1 1 is equal to 0 let us simplify what is it meaning it means alpha plus beta plus gamma that is the first element right what is the second that is beta plus gamma and that is the third one that is gamma right should be equal to 0 right i just added those vectors but that means what alpha plus beta plus gamma first the first equation that should be zero second beta plus gamma should be equal to zero and third says gamma should be zero right so these three equations must be satisfied and now just gamma is equal to zero if i put it in the backward here gamma is zero that means implies beta is equal to zero now alpha and beta both are zero put the values here that says uh, beta and gamma are zero that is implies alpha is also equal to zero right so that says that these three vectors in r3 are linearly independent so okay right so implies v1 v2 v3 are linearly independent right so that is a proof that i just now gave that the linear combination must be equal to zero let us look at uh, another example let us look at s is a set of three vectors right first vector is 2 minus 4 second is 1 9 and third is 3 5 right this is a subset of r2 each vector has got two components and we have got three vectors we want to know whether they are independent or not here it's quite easy to see that you can represent a linear combination of it equal to zero 
So, how will you make the first one 0? The first component, for example, 2, right? 2 plus 1 minus 3, that will give you first 0, right? So, it says the possibility, right? So, let us, if you look at C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second plus C3 times the third one, where C1 is equal to C2 and last one is minus 1, this linear combination is equal to 0 and the coefficients involved not all are 0. In fact, none of them is 0, right. So, I have got a linear combination of the three vectors equal to 0. So, 0 does not have a unique representation in terms of these vectors 3. So, what does it mean? The meaning is that these three vectors are not linearly independent, right. They are linearly dependent vectors. This phenomena will uh, observe this is, go is going to happen very often in the sense that see these are three vectors of two component each. So, whenever you will have a collection of vectors where the number of components is less than right, number of components is less than the number of vectors they are going to be linearly dependent vectors always. Can you can you see the reason why it should be? Let us just write and see whether why that should be true. If alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha k v k is equal to 0, right. That means, alpha 1 of a 1 1 A 1 N, right. Or probably I should write other way around. V 1, it has got N components, right. Okay, let us write what is V 1. This writing is a, so first component of V 1, right. So, we want to write as the first uh, row, okay, A 1 1, second row, so A 2 1, okay and we have got n, so a n 1, is it okay? Right. So, and uh, v k will be a uh, 1 k, a n k, right. So, then this equation is just writing it as a 1 1, a n 1, a 1 k, a n k applied to alpha 1 alpha k right is equal to 0. So, this equation is same as saying this equation right. So, now how many equations are here? n equations in k variables. So, this is so this is equivalent to so alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha k v k equal to 0 is equivalent to giving a system of equations right. So, we have got n equations in k variables. What are the variables? k variables alpha 1 up to alpha k are the variables right. So, n equations and when does a system of equations has a non trivial solution? is a homogeneous system, it always has a solution 0. When does it have a non-trivial solution? When the rank should be less than the number of, right, rank should be less, not the full rank, right. Here what is the rank possible? For this system, the rank, it should be less than the minimum of n and k, it should be minimum of n and k, right, minimum of number of rows and number of columns. So, if number of variables, what is the number of variables? If k is strictly bigger than n, so this is the assumption we are making, if the number of number of variables that is k is more than n, then what will happen? Then the rank 
will be always less than is the minimum. So, what is the minimum of k and n? That is n, rank will be less than or equal to n, right? Which will be less than, of course, k. There are k variables, right? How many variables are there? k, alpha 1 to alpha k, and the rank is strictly less than k. So, system of equations is consistent with actually infinite number of solutions, right? When the rank is strictly less than, so implies system has infinite solutions. Is it okay? Going back to system of linear equations, if the rank is strictly less than the number of variables, then how many variables get arbitrary values? Number of variables minus the rank, right? So, k minus the rank number of variables will get and k is strictly bigger. So, there will be at least one variable getting arbitrary values, right? Could be more. So, that means there are infinite number of solutions possible. That means what? That means in this linear combination, I can have infinite many solutions of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k such that this is equal to 0, right? That means if I have got more number of vectors than the number of components, then that set is always linearly dependent and that is what is happening in this case. I have got components 2, right? Number of vectors is 3. So, this will, this has to be linearly dependent and we verified that actually there is a possibility here, right? But that is a general solution and that is quite useful uh, writing later on that uh, if you are given a set of vectors, right? First see the components and the number of vectors. It may be obviously linearly dependent if possible, right? The number of vectors is more than the number of components. So, let us, uh, I have just recaptured all this uh, in this slide. B is linearly independent set, right? Uh, and uh, this 2 is a redundant thing actually, this should not be there, right? So, B is linearly independent and the span is V, right? So, itemized we should remove. B is maximum linearly independent or as a minimal, uh, uh, this should be a minimal set, right? Minimal, uh, minimal not again independent. I think these are all is wrongly typed things. Is it clear? Anyway, wrong thing also helps you to understand what should be the right thing. So, the first is B is linearly independent and spans V that is 1. Second, maximum linearly independent and the third it is a minimal set which generates. You do not have to put linear independent in that. Okay. So, now let us, uh, we said uh, number of, a vector space can have more than one basis, we saw that. So, let us construct one more example to say that a vector space. Okay. So, let us look at, uh, so consider V equal to R2 itself. I think we have done for lot of examples for R2, but it is good. Let us V equal to R2. Let us look at the set B1, which is uh, our 1, 0 and 0, 1, right. So, what is, why, why it is a basis? B1 is a basis why it is a basis. One, I should be able to check either by either of the definitions, right. So, let us check that B 1 is linearly independent, is a linearly independent set. So, how do I check it? Check alpha times 1 0 plus beta times 0 1, if it is equal to 0, should imply alpha equal to beta equal to 0, right. So, what is, what is this equation that is same as alpha plus beta comma, no sorry, this is same as saying alpha comma beta equal to 0, right. Alpha 0 plus 0 beta, so that is alpha comma beta and that implies alpha equal to beta equal to 0. So, linear independent, right. I should check either it is maximal, 
right or everything generates either of it is okay so now let us look at for every x comma y belonging to r2 i can write x comma y is equal to x times 1 0 plus y times 0 1 right so what does this imply that means x y belong to any vector in r2 belongs to linear span of b1 right is it okay it belongs to linear span of b1 because this is one vector 1 0 there is other vector so linear span of b1 is the whole space and it is independent so it generates l of b is equal to s and linear independence that implies it is a basis so implies it is a basis let us construct some other example another basis so let us look at b2 say let me keep 1 0 and let us take 1 1 right that is another set in r2 claim b2 is a basis i can use any define any one of those three so let us check independence first of all if we can check independence right so alpha of 1 0 plus beta of 1 1 equal to 0 what does that imply a linear combination equal to 0 what does it imply it implies alpha comma is alpha plus beta comma alpha uh, comma beta is equal to 0 right so that means alpha plus beta is equal to 0 and beta equal to 0 so that implies alpha equal to beta equal to 0 right so the set b2 is linearly independent next what should i check if i want to show it is a basis either i should show it is a maximal or it generates either of it so let us take let us take let x y belong to r2 can i find alpha beta such that x y is equal to alpha times 1 0 plus beta times 1 1 so that is a question right if i can find that means this will have a x y will be a linear combination of these two so what does it mean that is alpha plus beta comma beta so that that means what so this is the same as saying that alpha plus beta is equal to x and beta is equal to y right what is given to you x and y are given that is a vector given to me i want to find alpha beta so what this implies that this uh, beta is equal to y so what is x so that is x is equal to alpha plus y i put back the equation here so what is x oh right beta is i want to find alpha right so alpha is equal to x minus beta and that is uh, oh what was what what are trying to look for alpha we want to find alpha beta say that this is equal to so so alpha plus beta is equal to x beta is equal to y so okay so x sorry x minus y right x and y are given to us we want to find alpha beta so i put in this back equation okay beta is y so goes that side so i have found so for this choice so hence what does it imply hence the linear span of b1 or b2 we called it is also equal to r2 right so we have verified both the things linear span is equal to r2 and it is linearly independent so hence the set 1 0 
one one is also a basis. Is also a basis of I two. Right. So, given a vector space, there could be more than one basis of that vector space possible. So, that is what the remark says. A vector space can have more than one basis. However, a theorem in uh, our subject says that any two bases of the vector space will have same number of elements. The number of elements in two different bases has to be same. It cannot be right. One cannot have say in R two we said we had B one and B two both had two ve vectors right. One of them alone will not be able to generate. You want to see why? Let us see B one. What was B one? One zero and zero one, right? If I remove one of them, what do I get? Only one zero. And what will the generate? What will it generate? Linear combination. X comma zero. So that is only x axis, right? Other one alone will give me only y axis. So I cannot make it smaller anyway. If I make it bigger, if I add a third element to it, then it becomes linearly dependent. Independence is gone. Then just just now we saw three vectors of two component each will be dependent. So it cannot be that, right? Similarly, in the other one, in the other example, if I look at this, if I I cannot remove either of it. If I remove one one, I get only x axis. If I remove one zero, what do I get? x is equal to y right the line y equal to x so that is not the whole of plane right if i add one more then doesn't remain independent again the problem right so in r2 the number of elements in a basis how different bases are possible number of elements is same that is 2 so you will say the dimension of r2 as a vector space is 2 so we can define it for anything now The number of elements in any vector space, right? V is a subset of R n, which is a vector space. So, in any vector space, is the unique number that is the number of elements in the basis, and that is called the dimension of the vector space, right? So, one we showed every vector space has a basis, right? And secondly, this theorem we are not proving. That any two elements in the um, any the number of elements in a basis is unique. That means any two bases will have the same number of elements. We are assuming that as a consequence of it, every vector space you can associate a unique number, the number of elements in any basis of that which exists is called the dimension of it. In some sense, that is the size you can think of it as a size of, right? So let us look at some more examples. So let us look at this. Uh, consider the system x plus y minus z equal to zero. So x plus y minus z equal to zero. So we want to look at the solution space of this system. What is the solution space of this system? What does solution space mean? It is a set S, right, of all x, y, and z. If I write it as elements of R three, there are three variables such that x plus y minus z is equal to zero, right? As a set, I can write this. So, what is the order of the system? What is the order? Three variables, one equation. So one cross three, right? Is one cross three. It's okay. So what is going to be the rank of to find all solutions? Is a homogeneous system. So it is a. It is a homogeneous system, right? So, what is the rank of this? 
rank of the system yes rank is equal to how many pivots are there one which is less than three the number of variables n so that is r and that is equal to n so how many solutions are possible yes consistent infinite solutions right and we gave a method of saying how do you find the infinite solutions what where is the pivotal column pivotal variable is x right the pivot comes in the very first stage x so the value of x should be found in terms of y and z so we find value of x in terms of values of y and z so let us do that so let us put arbitrary values so let y be equal to 1 z be equal to 0 then what is x is equal to 1 minus 1 so what is y so x is equal to minus y plus z so what is that minus 1 plus 0 that is minus 1 so that is for this thing so let us take another value let us take y equal to 0 and z is equal to 1 then what is x is equal to so it is minus y plus z so that is equal to 0 plus 1 that is equal to 1 so i got two solutions so we have v1 so what is v1 so v1 is equal to uh, we got y equal to 0 uh, x is equal to minus 1 so minus 1 1 and 0 that is one solution second solution is v2 we got x is equal to 1 y equal to 0 z is equal to 1 i got two solutions right so let us form the set let b be the set v1 and v2 okay so if i can show that this set b right this is a subset of s that vector space s all solutions if I can show that this is generating everything and it is linearly independent then this will form a basis for the solution space right this will form a solution for the uh, this will form a basis for the solution space. So how do we check the independence so let us check independence so claim B is linearly independent so what does it mean alpha v1 plus beta v2 equal to 0 should imply alpha equal to beta equal to 0 right so what is it alpha times minus 1 1 0 plus beta times 1 0 1 so that is equal to that is equal to 0 that implies minus alpha alpha 0 plus beta 0 beta that is equal to 0 so the implies minus alpha plus beta the second one is alpha and third is beta equal to 0 right so that clearly implies that alpha equal to beta equal to 0 so linear independence okay does it generate everything so does it does that means uh, can I say L linear span of B is equal to S all solutions are linear combinations of this right so that is we have to check so let us uh, check that you can write a general solution as here called V1 and V2 so what does the general solution look like 
Okay, let us say what is the general solution. So, if uh, a vector v belongs to S, implies what? What was S equal to? That is x, y, and z such that x plus x minus y, x plus y. What was it? X plus y minus z equal to zero. That means v is equal to. So, what is the solution? What is x is equal to? I can compute x in terms of y and z. So, what is x from here? x is equal to minus y plus z, y and z. Is it okay? V should be of this form, where x and y are some constants. I don't know for some x and y, right? So that means so let us write this. So that is equal to. Can I write this in terms of v1 and v2? I want to write as b b1 plus alpha of v2 where. See this is what I have written there, where uh, what is beta? What is alpha and beta? You can put arbitrary; doesn't matter. You can put alpha and beta are arbitrary. If you want, if you know v, you can get alpha and beta. You can compute that from the system of equations, right? If v is known to you, then you can write down the system of equation and get the solution in terms of alpha and beta in terms of that components of v. But that itself says that v should be equal to this, right? Where alpha and beta are. That means what? Every solution is a linear combination of v1 and that says it is a linear combination of v1 and v2. So this is linearly independent. That set v, right? Those two elements are linearly independent and span everything. Every element is a linear combination. So implies v is a basis of the solution. Of the set S, which is all x, y, and z, say that x plus plus z equal to zero. Right. So what we have done is, given a system of equations which had infinite number of solutions, there were two free variables. We put them special values and got a basis for the solution space. That means the solution space for this particular homogeneous system is written as a linear combination of only two vectors. Right. so that is the advantage of basis so we'll continue this next lecture